Hey, it's Rob Jackson with Fandroid.com, and I'm here with the Samsung Transform, which is an Android phone that launched on Sprint in early October 2010. Uh, cost $150 on launch, and wanted to give you guys a quick overview of the hardware, the software, and my overall opinion on the phone. The Transform is a 3.5-inch capacitive touchscreen with 480 pixel by 320 pixel resolution. On the bottom, below the screen, you can see the typical Android keys with menu, home, back, and search, and these are capacitive as well. On the bottom of the phone, you can see this little hole, which is the microphone for your voice calls, obviously. On the top of the phone, you can see the 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and also this micro USB slot, which has a kind of neat uh, door that slides open to protect it. On the right side of the phone, we've got the power key, and also puts it to sleep and wakes it up a dedicated voice activation key and a dedicated camera key. On the bottom of the phone you'll see the speaker and a 3.2 megapixel camera with LED flash. There's also a 0.3 megapixel VGA camera on the front for taking self pics and video chat. And just to the left of that Sprint logo up here you'll see a status LED indicator light. In addition to touchscreen input, the Transform has a full slide-out QWERTY keyboard that's four rows. Although there's no dedicated number row, you can just press this function key along with the corresponding number in the upper right-hand corner in all these keys that you see is orange. Along with the D-pad on the right, some other interesting choices are a dedicated at sign, a symbol sign, and hmm, smiley. The bottom of the phone has a little opening at the top. You can just slide your finger in pop it open to reveal a 1500 milliamp battery. Find the groove at the bottom of the battery to easily pop it open. And at the bottom right of the battery you'll see this micro SD slot which holds up to 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Well you can remove the micro SD card without removing the battery itself as you can see here. You do have to remove the battery door. Not a big deal. The Transform comes in a package that's about 4.6 inches tall, 2.4 inches wide, and a little more than 0.6 inches in depth. Oh yeah, and it's about 5.4 ounces. A key factor in the performance of this phone is its gutch, which runs on a 800 megahertz processor, 256 megabytes of RAM, and 512 megabytes ROM. The Transform was kind of considered a low-end version of the Samsung Epic, which is one of the best Android phones out there, and from a hardware standpoint, I rather like it. Unfortunately, it's on the software side where things start to fall apart a little bit. The Transform's running Android 2.1, but just from the immediate first impression, it seems like the 800MHz processor isn't really enough steam to get through, and you can see the delay when, when dragging across the screen it's just a little bit behind and that's apparent on the home screen but you can see that in pretty much all the applications and and multimedia and types of stuff you're doing for example in the settings menu you notice the delay when flicking the screen this is even more apparent when playing games like angry birds Notice the choppiness and rigidness as the bird flies through the air and crashes. While part of this could be due to the resolution or aspect ratio of the screen compared to what Angry Birds was uh, optimized for, it's too obvious in different parts of the phone that it has these same types of problems with speed and processing. It'd be nice if the screen auto-rotated when you opened up the keyboard as well, but you're still going up and down. The reason I had high hopes for the Transform is because of Sprint ID. Basically, Transform comes with a plain Jane version of Android. Some people call it vanilla Android. Uh, but you can customize it with different groups of apps through what's called Sprint ID and a little store. Uh, some disappointments with Sprint ID is right now we've got five loaded. And you can see if I do get new, it says you may install up to six ID packs in this phone. After this installation, you'll need to delete an existing pack if you'd like to install another. Not yeah, it's not too bad, uh, but I was really, I thought this is a cool concept of taking uh, beginner 
Android users and being able to download these different packs geared towards their interests. You've got Yahoo, Small Biz, Entertainment Pack, Wear, Sprint, Auto Enthusiast, Business Pro, Fashion and Beauty, Health and Fitness, Home Base, Socially Connected, The Big Apple, LOT Football, LOT Mahair, EA, and Clean. And Clean essentially is uh, vanilla Android. So you can just out of the box have basic Android but immediately put a whole grouping of apps on your phone based on what you like and it kind of removes that need to search for all the little apps and every little trick and tip and whatever if you're if you're not an advanced smartphone user you can see I don't have <clears throat> I'm in a basement so I don't have great connection now but I found downloading these different IDs to be pretty slow some of the sprint ID packs I really liked for example Yahoo if you're used to Yahoo services, you like Yahoo Mail, Yahoo Finance, OMG, and all these different things, it's great because you can just install the Yahoo uh, ID pack and immediately Yahooify your phone. And you can see all the different Yahoo apps here at the bottom, Fantasy Football and all that great jazz. But some of the ID packs just seem like a marketing gimmick. For example, Games by EA. You've got Sims wallpaper and choices between different wallpaper, Tetris, Scrabble in the upper right without an icon, Sims, EA Mobile, get it, and all these different just links to the to EA Twitter, EA Facebook, EA.com, EA Store. And but there's nothing really that unique about it, especially like Tetris. First of all, I'm only able to play a demo, and while the game itself is kind of cool. It's just a demo and it seems like the purpose of the EA ID pack in the first place is to get you to play demos so you can buy the games when the demos themselves don't let you play for that long. But I guess when you let developers make their own ID packs, you're not really able to regulate that. But some of these ID packs are kind of cool. The bilingual ones, the Latino ones, Lotio, uh, Latino and uh, the Mujer are pretty cool. Um, let's see, well, the entertainment, the wear, they both give you nice starting points. And one thing that I do think cool is cool about uh, Sprint ID is if you want to manage the apps and say I want to remove um, Yahoo, it will allow me to select specific applications that I want to remove. So I can remove all the applications from it or maybe uh, I actually want that fantasy football. I can keep that and then look at wallpapers, ringtones, and only remove the items from that sprint ID I'd like to remove. The web browsing experience was pretty good and I guess what you would really expect with an Android phone. At 3.2 megapixels, they're really not trying to wow you with the camera, but it does a decent job. Um, it's got the basic modes. The scene modes, especially now, is cool because there was a fall color mode. And you can see samples um, on the actual review post. And the other nice thing was the camera mode. So in addition to the regular 3.2 megapixel camera, there's that front-facing camera. So I can see you. What's up? Unfortunately, there's no option to use the front-facing camera when you're in video mode. Oh, and by the way, for pictures, you can actually zoom in pretty far. Of course, it'll be lower quality because it's digital zoom. Bottom line recommendation on the Samsung Transform is that I would hold off getting it. Um, it is great hardware. I like the hardware. Um, it is basically like a lower end version of the Evo in terms of the hardware. I like the keyboard. I like a lot about the hardware for a low end handset, but $150 isn't really a low end price. And um, really, at this point in the game, you should be able to get an Android phone that works quickly, um, operates smoothly, uses the apps quickly, uh, and, and doesn't have a lot of hesitation in terms of connectivity and speed of the user interface. Now remember, the Transform is running Android 2.1, and it is expected to eventually get an update to Android 2.2, which optimizes a lot in terms of um, an operating system standpoint. So this phone could get an update and be super quick and uh, work like new, and, and the cost might drop, and I definitely recommend it. 
um, but that remains to be seen. Also, it'll be interesting to see how quickly this phone gets updated to Android 2.2. We know that vanilla Android handsets are much quicker to get uh, move to a new operating system version because not a complete overhaul has to be done of a custom UI. Uh, and this is a morph between a custom UI, which looks like vanilla Android, and Sprint ID. So we'll definitely have our eye on that. I was hoping that the 800 megahertz processor uh, combined with a slightly smaller screen than, than some of the big boys with a 3.5 inch screen and a little bit lower resolution might mean this thing would be pretty quick, but um, right now, I can't recommend the Samsung Transform when there are so many good uh, affordable alternatives out there that run uh, Android 2.x Plus uh, a bit better than the Transform. Thanks for listening to the Fandroid.com review of the Samsung Transform for Sprint, one of the first Sprint ID phones, and available as of late October for $150 with a two-year agreement.